This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman with Juan Gonzalez. A U.N. convoy of food trucks trying to bring 200 tons of food into northern Gaza was turned back by the Israeli military today. A convoy of 14 trucks waited for three hours at the Wadi Gaza checkpoint in central Gaza before it was turned away by the Israeli military and later stopped by a large crowd of desperate people who, quote, looted the food, according to the World Food Program. This comes as Israeli forces have repeatedly opened fire on Palestinians seeking to get aid in northern Gaza, killing at least 119 people in the most deadly attack February 29th. Hunger has reached catastrophic levels in Gaza. The Palestinian health ministry said today the death toll from malnutrition and dehydration is risen to 18, adding, quote, the famine's deepening and will claim thousands of lives if the aggression is not halted and humanitarian and medical aid is not immediately brought in, unquote. Children, pregnant women, those with chronic illnesses are most vulnerable. Meanwhile, the Israeli bombardment continues with shelling and airstrikes today in cities across the Gaza Strip, including in Rafah, Khan Yunus, Deir al and elsewhere. At least 30,700 Palestinians have been killed, over 72,000 wounded in Gaza over the past five months. Nearly the entire population has been displaced from their homes. For more, we go to Cairo, Egypt, where we're joined by Susan Abuhawa a Palestinian novelist, poet and activist, author of several books, best known for her debut novel, Mornings in Janine, an international bestseller translated into 32 languages, considered a classic in Palestinian literature. She's the founder and co-director of Playgrounds for Palestine, a children's organization, and the executive director of Palestine Rights Literature Festival. She just returned from Gaza after spending two weeks there, um, as now in Cairo. Uh, Susan, Welcome to Democracy Now! If you can talk about what you saw, um, you have written, some are eating stray cats and dogs, which are themselves starving and sometimes feeding on human remains that litter streets where Israeli snipers pick off people who dare to venture within the sight of their scopes. The old and weak have already died of hunger and thirst. Describe your trip. So that, that part of the essay uh, is in the northern region, where nobody really is allowed to go. Um, trying to venture into the north is a suicide mission. There are tanks and snipers positioned, and anyone trying to get there um, is, is basically killed. Uh, as you just mentioned, aid trucks are not getting in either. They are intentionally stopped. And uh, it's an intentional starvation, basically. Um, I was primarily in the south, in Rafah. Uh, I was able to go to Khan Yunus and to Nusayrat and a few other places in the middle region, but that uh, became increasingly more dangerous. I want to say that. Um, the reality on the ground is infinitely worse than the worst videos and photos that we're seeing in the West. There is a, you know, beyond people being buried alive en masse in their homes, uh, their bodies being shredded to pieces, uh, these kinds of videos and images that people are seeing. Beyond that, there is this daily massive degradation of life. It is a total denigration of a whole society that was, that was once high-functioning and proud, uh, 